Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Polkadot and where it might be heading next. So first off, if you're not familiar, Polkadot is a layer zero protocol. So it's actually a protocol on which layer ones are built on top. And this has different advantages, such as offering native interoperability between different layer ones that are built on Polkadot and also things like security and other benefits. So DOT has a bit of an interesting price history. It came into existence kind of in the middle of the last bull cycle. So it, it came into existence before the big run up that happened into early 2021, but after some of the initial appreciation other assets had seen. And so after that big bull phase, prices fell back down to roughly the same levels. Now, more recently, we've seen a nice rally out of the lows with DOT rallying, we just measure here up about 165% in total from top to bottom. Not too bad, but also not quite as good as some other assets. But that's in the past, that's what's happened. Let's talk about the future and where DOT might be going from here. So to do this, I wanna look at some of our models that we have here on the channel and at our website, partydigital.io, to see what they are thinking. So the first one I wanna talk about is our short-term upside downside potential indicator, or UDPI. This is one of our risk models that cares about moves that play out over days two weeks, so relatively short term in its time horizon. And generally speaking, higher levels mean higher risk, lower levels mean lower risk. Now you can see is that this model has done a good job of capturing these dynamics of when DOT is relatively high risk and also when it's relatively low risk. And then more recently in this rally, we can see it did the same, kind of got elevated at this local top here, cooled off quite a bit, and then came up here at the top of this run as well. And it has now cooled off substantially, getting all the way back down to negative 3.5 about at the lows. And now we've been slowly rallying out of that. Now, what that means is that back over here, DOT really had tapped out its short-term upside potential. It was unlikely DOT was going to be able to do much more in this rally. And I noted this at the time. It seemed like DOT was getting quite overextended. But then we had this cooling off. And what this means is DOT has now accrued a lot more short-term upside potential to work with if it wants to. And that's where I think if the broader markets allow, if broader markets remain bullish, then I think it's reasonable to think that DOT could go ahead and realize some of this upside potential. So nothing's guaranteed, but this is certainly a better setup than here. You'd much rather see the short-term UDPI be down here if you wanna see some upside than seeing it all the way up here like it was just back in December. So I'll have to wait and see, but that's a, certainly a good sign for the bulls in that the conditions are much more favorable for upside in the short term now than they were just back then. But now let's zoom out a bit more beyond just the short term and think about some longer term data. So the next model I wanna talk about is our momentum bias indicator or MBI. So this captures momentum in the market. Is the momentum prevailing to the upside or to the downside? And what tends to happen with the MBI is you'll see distinct patterns of behavior at different times in the market cycle. So in a bull market, you're gonna spend most of your time up in the green. And then in bear markets, you're gonna do the opposite. You're gonna spend most of your time in the red with just brief attempts to kind of get above zero. But then the most interesting in some ways behavior of the MBI is when you do this, when you kind of more or less oscillate around zero. So the way that the MBI is interpreted is as a Z score. So zero is the average amount of momentum in the asset. Anything above is standard deviation units to the positive side and standard deviation units to the downside. And so when you're oscillating around zero, what it means is you're kind of hanging out at around the average amount of momentum in the market. And that can oftentimes be a good thing. It means you're not continuing to have downside negative momentum win out. You're kind of having a more neutral momentum bias or maybe even positive with DOT having these big positive moves in the past the average momentum for DOT is likely positive. And so you're kind of hanging around that neutral to positive level. And then that lets the kind of the market build, the kind of coil up on a spring you can almost think of, transitioning out of the bear that then allows into this bolt new bull market. And this is a behavior that you see on every asset. You look at the MBI for Bitcoin, you look at the MBI for Ethereum, you name it, they'll show these phases, bull market, bear market, and then this transition out. And so it sure looks like DOT has maybe completed or is in the process of completing this transitionary period and now slowly starting to transition more into a bull market footing. We see we went and had a massive explosion to positive momentum bias here in this run up, dipped back down, touched below zero, and now we're starting to rally back up out of that. 
it's not unsurprising to see those trips back into the negatives before returning to the upside in bull markets. So again, DOT has not seen a full bull market before. It really kind of came into existence about halfway through the last full bull market. So now we might be starting to see that play out for its full real kind of bull cycle going forward. Time will tell, obviously not financial advice, you should make these data as you will. But that's one of the things I'm gonna be watching. Do we continue to kind of start being more likely to spend time in the green now than the red for DOT on the MBI? That would be a good sign. And I think we've already seen some good hopeful signs already. So the final piece of data I wanna talk about is our forecast model. So this looks at a six month window in the future. So basically it's saying, what is the probability of upside six months from now? And so basically then the way you interpret it is if you're up, it goes between zero and one. So any value is basically just a probability. So for example, at 0.93 would be 93%, all the way down here at 0.1 would be 10%. And so you can see it does a really good job of capturing these dynamics where it's bullish in the bull market as prices were moving up. And then we went to the ultimate all-time high here. But then as we went into the all-time high, getting really bearish on DOT, saying that we we're very unlikely to be seeing upside in a six months in the future from these levels. And indeed, we had the bear market that went all the way through here. But then as we started to transition, as we saw in the MBI, as we started to get into this transitionary period, you'll notice that the forecast model was getting increasingly bullish. And now it's quite bullish after these current levels, especially as we started to correct here, getting up above 90% chance of upside in six months in its estimation. So that's another hopeful sign for DOT that you know, had this rally, it maybe didn't uh, kind of outperform some other alts out there, but did outperform a number of other ones. But maybe that's just the first step, the first hurrah, and we're maybe going to be seeing more upside coming, that this is the early stages of a new bull market, and that we might be able to expect up being the more logical sign than down. Now, obviously, even that 93, 94, that's not 100, but it's a heck of a lot better than 5% of upside, for example, like we were back here. So that's something that I'm watching. If the forecast model remains bullish, then I'll remain bullish as well. It's bullish now, so I have a bullish side to the way I'm looking at things. Now, to wrap up, I want to talk about a few other dynamics that are important to keep in mind with an asset like DOT. So one of the things I did want to mention with DOT is the fact that its supply is not capped. It is a theoretically infinite amount of supply, and it is an inherently inflationary asset. So DOT inflates at a rate of around 10% annually. And this is important to keep in mind because it means that with DOT, there's going to be this constant debasement that happens. And if you hold a DOT today, in a year from now, 10% more DOT will exist than did when you, you know, first bought this DOT today. And so that means that there can be some downward pressure on DOT's price if a lot of that new inflation ends up being sell pressure or contributing to sell pressure. If people are just staking their DOT to earn rewards and then they're taking that DOT and they're selling it into the open market, that's increased supply, you would need increased demand to be able to offset that all else being equal. So we can also get a sense of what these dynamics look like if we look at the surrounding staking and what things look like. So the good news with DOT is that you can actually off more than offset the inflation just by staking your DOT. So the current reward rate, um, according to stakingrewards.com, is just under 14%. And if they just adjust it based on the taking out inflation, basically they say that it's really more of a 565 percent inflation. Now it's more complicated than this. Not all of the inflation of DOT is necessarily contributing to sell pressure. If people are just getting that DOT and just holding it, then that's actually as if it didn't exist. If you know whoever just got it is just not doing anything with it, it's not having any effect on the price of DOT. Another thing we can look at is the staking ratio. What percentage of DOT that's out there are actively being staked right now? We see it's over 50%. That's also a good sign because it means that 50% of DOT are likely dot that people aren't really going to be touching, that people aren't really going to be selling it because they're staking it and they're earning the rewards. There's more friction, basically. Not that they couldn't unstake and sell, but it's harder to do that than just sell dot you had just sitting around that you weren't doing anything with. So the higher the staking ratio is, oftentimes that can be a good sign just because it means that more of the available supply might be less likely to hop onto the market at a given point in time. So that's something I like to keep an eye on as well. But it's just important to keep that in, in mind that the utility of DOT or the purpose of DOT isn't necessarily to be this store of value or something that's deflationary or anything like that. It's a utility token. Now, I know that DOT 2.0 is going to have some changes where there are going to be some burning mechanisms and things like that that might reduce the inflation rate or theoretically in, in extreme enough situations could actually lead to deflationary tokenomics. But currently, the way things are, that's not the case. 
but it's also not even necessarily the point that with these utility tokens, in some ways, having it be a store of value isn't even desirable. Because when you have a utility token, you don't want it to be the case that the early adopters or the people who cornered the market early just have an outsized amount of power on the network or that it's really expensive to do new things with it. You want newer people coming in to actually be able to acquire that utility token at a reasonable rate or a reasonable price so they can go ahead and actually use it. And so when you have these protocols that have you know, uncapped supplies and have these inflationary tokenomics, in some ways that's by design. And it's not necessarily that the value for the protocol is supposed to come from it being a store of value. The value is supposed to be things building on top of it. And then that drives demand that outweighs that inflation. Basically the idea being that the utility of the network outweighs the inflation that's inherent to it. And it's easier to let new people on board if they're not just stuck fighting for maybe a dot that already existed that's just being held by a few people who could drive price up and make it more difficult for you to deploy on the network. And especially in a competitive environment like Web3, where it's not just dot that's out there, but a bunch of other ones where you're competing, you don't necessarily want it to be the case that people just go to some other place because it's easier or cheaper to do so. So I think it's important to keep in mind some of those things, but it's also important to keep that in mind if you're just evaluating dot as an investment about what it means, that it's not the same thing as, for example, Bitcoin in the way its tokenomics work. It's not the same thing as Ethereum in the way its tokenomics work. So your thesis has to keep that in mind. And so basically for that long-term view, really the most bullish thesis for DOT in some ways would be that you think that demand for DOT because of its utility will far outweigh any kind of inflation that there is. And then of course you could factor in maybe benefits that um, DOT 2.0 might be including as well in terms of some of those dynamics. But it's just important to keep those things in mind. I feel like people don't talk about supply enough in crypto. So I always like to talk about that and factor it into kind of this mental model we might use when evaluating a given asset. All right, so obviously none of that finan is financial advice. You should make your own opinions. Those are some things that I'm thinking about with Dot right now. So if you like the content or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there. You can go to our website, partydigital.io, link in the description, see live data from our models and more.